100 of the Cummins Real Estate Group show with the one and only one L, Michelle Cummins, and myself, Curtis Pope. Can you believe it, Michelle? We're here at episode 100. I was just thinking, what in all caps, exclamation mark, question mark? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and there needs to be an emoji in there, I think, too. Oh, of course, I missed that one. Yeah. I can't believe it. A hundred and, uh, and it just feels like number one. I know, a hundred episodes and counting. And we're going to have some fun in the second segment. We're going to kind of do a best of Michelle, a worst of Curtis segment. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> but for the first segment, for the 100th episode of the show, we, uh, we're we going to chat a bit about what's going on, I guess, locally and a few other things, too, aren't we? Exactly, and it's Thanksgiving weekend, so I just thank everyone who's listening in, and, ha- and I wish you all a very, very wonderful Thanksgiving weekend with your lovely families. Yes, absolutely. It is Thanksgiving weekend, or basically what it's come down to in the Pope family is it's Turkey weekend. Ooh, you have turkey. I was going to ask you what you have traditionally. Uh, well, you know what? Here's the thing, and my brother might be a little embarrassed about this because I'm going to be throwing him under the bus a bit here. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner has always been a big deal in the Pope household because it's uh, it's all about um, overindulging. And my brother uh, is an expert at getting as much turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing and everything into his body as is humanly possible. Does he prep a few days beforehand where you eat a little more and a little more than you usually do to stretch your tummy muscles? I don't think my brother needs to stretch his. Um, <laughs> you know what? My brother's always been a big eater. Like he could all eat. Back when he had a metabolism, he was the kind of, you know, 17, 18 year old kid who would have dinner and then come upstairs and make himself a sandwich. <laughs> okay. Two questions then. What is your favorite part of the meal? Um, one question. I would, I, you know, I'm a big, big fan of mashed potatoes and gravy. Just, okay, what do you like in your mashed potatoes? Garlic or like uh, sour cream or cream cheese mixed in it or what type? I can't say I have found a mashed potato I don't like. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the mashed potatoes on the wall. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I even like instant mashed potatoes like at buffet restaurants, all right? I am not picky when it comes to mashed potatoes. Okay, second question. What's your favorite after Thanksgiving meal, like leftovers, like how you like creating leftovers? Okay, now this is something that I can get into. <laughs> I actually, uh, I'd never done it before, but a couple years ago, I decided I was going to use the, uh, uh, that was left of the turkey and make turkey stock and make turkey soup. I thought that would be good. I love in? making turkey soup. Well, you throw in, you know, what's left of the bird. Uh, you know, you got the, you know, the, the, a lot of the dark meat and things like that. You throw in some vegetables. Uh, it really is, uh, you know, whatever the heck you want to throw into it, I guess. And uh, and then what I do, and my kids love this, is I do make up some more stuffing, just instant stuffing, and kind of put that on top of the soup. And uh, they really, it's almost like French onion soup with the, with Ooh. you know, that way. So yeah, that that's that's what okay. I love doing. I've never heard that before. That is awesome. I think we're going to try to do that this year. Yeah, tell Richard he has to make turkey soup. Okay, I'm going to tell him. I'll tell him that you told me to tell him that. Yeah. Um, by the way, Curtis, I was going to say, I think you're having way too much fun in your offices. Like, Country 107.1 has turned into, I think, like a spa-like experience for people. <laughs> I really like your nap room and your theater room. I mean, you might as well just live there. Yeah, well, it's it's pretty much the case. So, yeah, we I had a little fun with a video the other day, and people can see it on the Country 107.1 Facebook page. And, and uh, even Jess had a good sense of humor about it at my little joke about her uh, doing her one-woman play, I Love Tinder. It's about campfires. I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so great. Well, one day when you're around here again, when we open up the office again, you know, because you have an acting background, we'll get you in one of these videos. I could put a whole, like, a thing on, like uh, one of those suits so that you're safe. (laughs) We'll have you in a hazmat suit. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) It'd be hard to watch the play. Now, I was just thinking, though, now you being uh, of American descent, now do you celebrate two Thanksgivings every year then? Do you pull that trick? 
Oh, yeah, of course. I'd be silly not to. <laughs> it's the opportunity. In fact, this Monday, my dad's birthday was last Monday, so I suggested we all do a Zoom call. So all eight of us um, got on, except for me, because I was working, and I couldn't get on the Zoom call, and I'm the one who suggested it. But anyways, my family had a great time, two hours, talking to my dad all on Zoom, and my dad liked it so much. He's all, we need to do this weekly at 530 on Mondays. So I'm like, well, I'm glad I know so I could book it. So <laughs> this Monday... And it's Thanksgiving, so I suggested, why don't we all have a dinner party on Monday on Zoom? And, uh, you know, it's Thanksgiving up here in Canada, so let's all have uh, turkey and mashed potatoes stuffing and Armenian rice pilaf together. Oh, there we go. That sounds like a good plan. So that's what we're going to do. A new tradition. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so they're all going to, uh, they, they like living vicariously through me. Yeah, well, again, when it comes to Thanksgiving, yeah, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. Any time to have two? Oh, my gosh. But then you've got Christmas, and that's turkey as well. But, okay, we should move on to our stats because I'm sure everyone is so excited to hear about the monthly real estate statistics in the Fraser Valley. Well, I'm excited to hear them, so let's hear what you got. Okay, so the housing market activity, it actually reached historic levels in September. And I know sales, and we've been the highest prices we've ever been in July, August, September, but also sales in September. Uh, consumer demand for real estate in the Fraser Valley remained robust for the fourth consecutive month. So with overall sales and new listings reaching those record-breaking numbers, uh, the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board actually processed 2,231 sales on the MLS in September. That's an increase of 66.1% compared to the same month last year and an increase of 9.4% compared to August of 2020. This is the highest recorded sales for September in the history of the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board. So when, you know, you can't reach a, a, a realtor maybe on the phone every time you call, you know, this is they're probably already on the phone or face-to-face with somebody, and hopefully they'll get back to you as soon as possible. But it has been busy for the 3,600 or so realtors in the Fraser Valley. In the last three months, Fraser Valley has seen a defined shift in demand towards single-family detached homes. With sales in July through to September garnering 47% of the three main residential types compared to 43% during the same period of last year. So our president at the board, Chris Shields, he says for many existing homeowners and first-time home buyers, their buying power is greater than it's been in a long time because interest rates are very low. People have saved money over the last few months, and they're choosing to invest it in their most important assets. Sellers are also recognizing that with the lower than normal inventory, this is a very smart time to list. In September, the average number of days to sell a condo was only 35 days. For townhouses, it was only 25 days. And for single-family detached homes, it was an average of 28 days. So now I want to go into the single-family detached benchmark prices, then the townhome prices and apartment condo prices for overall in the whole Fraser Valley of the five municipalities. So for single-family detached, prices benchmark are at $1,032,700. For townhouses, it's $567,300. And for condos, it's at $436,000. Nine hundred dollars, and so now for those of you who are more interested in the municipality that you live in, Langley for benchmark prices of detached are at one million seventy-eight thousand one hundred. That's an increase of nine point eight percent over last year, and an up of one point one percent from the month before. And townhouses. Five hundred and seventy-six thousand nine hundred. That's up four point two percent from last year, and up point one percent from the month before. And condos are four hundred and four thousand one hundred. That's up seven percent from last year, and point eight percent from the month before. Then Delta detached benchmark prices are at nine hundred and forty-six thousand eight hundred dollars. That's up eight point one percent from last year, and up one point two percent from the month before. Townhouses are 564500 That's up 1.5% from last year, but actually down 2.2% from the month before. 
condos are at $394,000. That's up 7.7% from last year and 1.8% from the month before. And then Surrey is at $1,127,900 for detached single-family homes. That's up 7.5% from last year and up 0.9% from the month before. Townhouses at 591500 That's up 4.1% from last year and 0.8% from the month before. And condos at 401800 That's up 4.7% from last year, but down 0.3% from the month before. Now let's check out Abbotsford. Detached benchmark prices are at $868,300. That's up 9.7% from last year and 2.2% from the month before. Townhouses at $468,500, up 3.1% from last year and up 0.7% from the month before. And condos at $324,500, up 3.9% from last year, but down 0.2% from the month before. Mission, hop on over the Fraser River, and you've got detached homes benchmark price at 711700 that's up 11.6% from last year. I think that's the most from year over year. And up 2.1% from the month before. Townhouses at 470000 That's up 5% from last year and up 1% from the month before. And condos at 352000 up 0.7% from last year and up 1.1% from the month before. And that is your monthly Fraser Valley Real Estate Statistics. Wow, and there was a lot to uh, to go there, too, a lot to get through. <laughs> it sure was. So let's move really quickly forward into the new listings before we get, go into break. Sure, what do you uh, got? Because, okay, I've got an exciting open house today from 2 to 4, a brand-new listing of a two-bedroom, one-bathroom, 815-square-foot renovated penthouse condo. It's off Rainbow Avenue in the Tempo Building in Abbotsford, which is west of McCallum. You could walk to Cabela's. I love that store. You could walk to Starbucks. Who doesn't like that? Great shopping, a hop, skip, and a jump to Highway 1. It allows rentals. So perfect for the investor, the first-time home buyer, the downsizer. Lots of businesses a block away. It's priced at 377000 The building is really nice and clean. And then we've got upcoming next week this awesome detached property. I have an Abbotsford of an over 10,000 square foot lot. And this is views of Sumas Flats and the mountains, like Mount Baker. Who doesn't love that view? It's a three bedroom, three bathroom, completely renovated. I mean, it's like a brand new home from 2018. It's just over 2,000 uh, square feet. So it's almost 2,100 square feet. It's absolutely gorgeous. I have a video online of it. Go on, check it out, pictures. It's really outstanding. And then a townhouse in Mission coming up next week. So keep an eye out for it. Oh, I should say the price of that Ackerman Court one. So 1748 Ackerman Court will be priced, or it is, uh, just actually went on the market, $1,025,000. The townhouse in the mission that I have coming up is a great one. It's three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and it's priced at 489900 That one will come out probably next Thursday. Okay, now if people do want more information about what you do and the services you provide and, and everything else, because you, you, you do, of course, all kinds of levels of real estate, right? I do. Commercial, residential, development, land assemblies. I mean, everything you can think of, vacation properties. You can check it all out at michellecummins.ca. We're back with more right after this. Number two of the Cummins Real Estate Group show with Michelle Cummins and myself, Curtis Pope. So for this segment, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of give you a best of segment celebrating our 100th episode. When I say best of, it's a best of Michelle and a worst of Curtis. But we'll start right off. We'll get into it with the origins of Michelle's theme song, Somewhere Girl. 
thanks again for joining us. Uh, now, Michelle, it's great to be back here for week number two. And uh, I got to ask you about that. We, we have your own theme song. Uh, where does that come from? Oh, Somewhere Girl. <laughs> yeah, are, are, you're the Somewhere Girl, I understand. Yes, my husband wrote that and for me, and it's a little, little jingle. Um, <laughs> Somewhere Girl, I, I'm i just kind of like real estate. I'm, I'm kind of, I like a lot of things. I like a lot of different foods. I like visiting and love a lot of different places, and I kind of here and there and everywhere, so I like a lot of things. I'm yeah. So you're the somewhere girl. I'm the somewhere girl. Not everybody has their own theme song. <laughs> <laughs> so you got that going for you. Now, that's my version of the meaning of the song. Now, I'm going to have to ask Richard what his meaning was when he wrote it. <laughs> got you. So you're saying your husband could have a whole different reason for writing it that's for you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to ask him. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll have to get him in as a guest one week, and he can explain all the origins of the song as we kick off the show. <laughs> for sure. Sir Richard the Lionheart. <laughs> Sometimes we even let Richard on the air. Are you playing a little good cop, bad cop here, too? Is that what's going on? Yeah, she's such a bad cop. I know. <laughs> wait, wait a second. No, she's that's got, me. She's got that mean streak, you <laughs> just know, and just brutal. No, nobody sees it off the air when she's throwing stuff no. at me when I screw when you up hit and the stuff. Commercial yeah, button, it was like <laughs> <laughs> chaotic mess. In here. Nobody's gonna buy this. You know <laughs> no, that. I don't no. think so. Um, we tried. No, Michelle is exactly what you hear. She's very, very nice and very sweet and puts up with my. Bad jokes every week whenever I throw something at her. <laughs> That's right, but a little bit of that parlay isn't even what we're talking about because um, we've heard it all. We've heard it everything because of a certain level of success. You know, that Michelle, she must be up to something. Hello, Curtis Pope. How are you? I am good. Now, uh, before I forget, I want to get right out of the way, right off the get-go, and wish you a happy 29th birthday yesterday. Oh, 29 forever. That's on my golf cart. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How did you know? Because uh, you've told me repeatedly that you're 29. Uh, yeah, don't you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we have to talk about real estate on a real estate show, and sometimes we have a little fun while we're at it. What are the buyers looking for? So the first thing they're looking for is, of course, um, street appeal. So pick up the windblown garbage and tidy up the grass and the bushes. That makes a huge difference put some fresh flowers it could be movie magic fake flowers but put some color out there rake the leaves if you haven't for the last five years i would advise though (laughs) or hire a neighbor to do it Uh, the kids in the neighborhood they'd love 20 bucks exactly (laughs) and the second thing buyers look for is cleanliness so when they open that door bright cheery meaning all the lights on but but in, in working, light bulbs that are all working. So cleanliness and that if something's broken and you see that it's broken, fix it. And all those little details, it's about the details. But cleanliness is the second most important thing to prepare your home for sale. So if that's hiring a, a cleaner and my, my my listings, if they need it, I'll hire a cleaner and get them in there. That's really important. Um, wash the walls and the, the switches and plates and things like that. Um, and the third thing that they're looking for the most is they have to see through the furniture and the items and, and all the stuff that we collect in our lives. And sometimes we're blinded to it. So, for instance, uh, you walk into a room and there's a whole shelf full of unicorns. Well, all the buyer's going to see is the unicorn. That's and right. We... Just be distracted by it. That was a whole lot of unicorns in that place. <laughs> Remember the unicorn house? Yeah, I can see how that would happen. Yeah. Exactly. And all they think about when they leave is unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> you want them to talk about the house that they're going to live in, and you want them to think of the house that they're going to live in. So really uh, decluttering, minimizing things. Then there are other times when we let Michelle tell a joke or two, or sometimes three. Okay, this is about like a job interview. A new agent walks into a realtor's office for an interview. It says, here you quit your... I'm looking at the resume, right? It says, here you quit your last job selling duct tape after only three months. Why did you quit? They say, I just couldn't stick with it. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Hi-oh. But you know, that is so true with a lot of realtors because they don't understand how hard it is to be a realtor and what it takes. That's why we have like 17,000 real estate agents in the lower mainland. But, they, <laughs> but they, all, they, they drop their licenses and then more people. It's because they, there's so many new licensees, but there's a lot of people who are dropping their licenses as well. And right? I know it's an so interesting it's like this flow. field. Like you have people that, that do like, they'll do like one house for friends and stuff, but they're still licensed and they, they do it extremely yeah, part time. Yeah, they just hang their license yeah. and and it's there, yeah. but they may only sell one or two a year, yeah. maybe, if yeah. that. And they just kind of do it job. as a part time side <laughs> job. And, and you got people that, you know, like you that are full time rock stars and everything in between. 
Our guest is a rock star, actually. Well, yeah, he's got the hair for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah really cool hair, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, okay, another uh, house joke. Okay, this is about house attire. Oh, we get two jokes Check today. this out. Uh, actually, I have three. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really, uh, yeah. I, I brought it. I brought the goods. Okay, so house attire. What does a house wear? I don't know. Address. Ad- address. 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 Uh-huh. Address. Address. <laughs> uh. <Okay>. <laughs> I do not tell jokes Boom. very well. Can you tell? Okay, but my last joke, because I can't help but not say it. Okay, the lightest building. Okay. What kind of building weighs the least? I don't know. Doug? Do you have an answer? <laughs> He's afraid to answer, I think, <laughs> after that last joke. A, a lighthouse. A lighthouse. Woo, woo. Okay, that's a little better. <laughs> I'll give you that one. Okay, that <laughs> The was middle fun. one, I don't know so much. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> On extremely rare occasions, I have to help Michelle out with the odd word. She claims it's her Californian accent that gets in the way. Not all storms come to disrupt your life. Some come to clear your path. Oh. Silver lining in, in a storm. Uh, that's uh, unanimous or unanimous. U- or unanimous? Unanimous. Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What we're unanimous that it was a good quote, but it's an anonymous quote. <laughs> what did I tell you about my words earlier in the show? Sometimes we have guests on the show, and Michelle is world famous for her introductions. All right, well, we have a special guest here, so I think it's time for the big Michelle Cummins introduction. <laughs> very, very happy and honored to have the president of Barmwell Bram- and Associates. <laughs> Bramwell and Associates. Very Bramwell close. Bramwell and Associates. I thought I was close. I was so ask close. About that. So and close. It, and, it, and it actually is pronounced as you can read it. It's, it's as easy as that. Jeremy, thank you so much for coming in today. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for having me. We're very happy to have you here and to help our listeners know more about appraisals. Okay, so do we have time though for Jamie's introduction right now? We have now? time for Jamie's introduction. Oh, she got all the time to okay, roll for Jamie. Perfect. Okay, let's do that. But you know, Chip, you know he can wait. <laughs> so Jamie's with Simini Lending Mortgages. She owns West Coast Mortgages and their Diamond Award winning mortgage brokerage. Uh, and he- she heads uh, the broker owner, Jamie Moy, and Michelle Chandra, aided and embedded by client services manager Kelly Sloan as well, with over 25 years combined experience in the mortgage and real estate industry, they are more than confident that they can find you the best possible mortgage for your situation. And I know that because they've helped countless of clients of mine. And I've known Jamie personally for like 10, 15, actually 15 years. So whether you're a first-time home buyer looking for your very first home or an experienced homeowner looking for options to buy or refinance, DLC West Coast Mortgages has the very best products and rates available across Canada. Their goal is to help as many people as possible become homeowners because they believe that it is one of the most important steps to financial security for you and your family. They believe that home ownership should be celebrated. So here's to home ownership. So let's welcome Jamie. Thank you. Uh, was I supposed to cheer there? Or, uh, yes. Oh, so yeah. Put that little track with applause. That's right. Down clap track. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It's I, awesome to I be back I think you Jamie's officially like the guest we've had back the most, I think. Now. Yes, she yeah. has. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Put you in the lead, I think, now. Nice. <laughs> Sometimes Michelle catches me off guard by asking me questions. I wanted to ask. Who in all of the world, because it would be her for me, who in all of the world would you want to spend a whole day with if it was your choice? Anybody. A whole day. I guess they have to be alive. Yeah, let's say alive. Yeah, because it might be creepy otherwise. Uh, Who would I want to spend the day with? Who would I want to spend the day with? Wow, that's a good question. Um... Um, you know, as as much as it's uh, very stereotypical, what I do, I would love to spend the day with Howard Stern. That guy's like the best interviewer out there right now. Oh, that's excellent. Guy went from yeah. shock jock to like now he you know interviews A list celebrities and everybody else. He, he had Hillary Clinton on him, you know, a couple months back and stuff like that. Like how that guy came from everybody looking down their nose at him to be. How many people do you think he's interviewed? Oh, I wouldn't even know. I mean, he's 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 the guy now. He's an amazing interviewer too, so I'd want to I'd want to you know go and soak a little of that up. That would be that would be so awesome. I really hope that happens for you. And something we've added to the show over the years, we have a little quote that we end the show with. 
Now, do you have a quote of the week for us, Curtis? I, I, I do because I have uh, I have a whole lot of favorite quotes, and, and this is one of mine. And it's uh, if your dreams don't scare you, they are too small. Lovely, oh, and, and that Thank is from you. Sir Richard Branson. Oh, I love it. Yes, I'm a big Richard Branson fan. I, I know he's a little crazy. I like my billionaires a little crazy. So <laughs> Good to know. Uh, all right, so if people want more information about what you do, what can they do? MichelleCummins.ca. And make sure you tune in again next week when, once again, we will talk about real estate in order to unlock your real estate potential on a show where real estate is maximized. Thanks for listening.